Hi, my name is Chrysanthi Eastman, and I'm going to be doing the presentation on Levine's conservation model. Introducing Myra Estrad Levine. She was born in Chicago, Illinois in 1920. She developed an interest in nursing because her father was frequently ill. Levine stated that she, her father required nursing care on many occasions, and she believes that developed her interest in nursing. She was the eldest of three children who she was very close with. Myra Levine has been called a Renaissance woman because she was highly principled, remarkable, and committed to what happened to the patient's quality of life. Myra Levine's education and career. She graduated from the Cook County School of Nursing in 1944. She went on to get her bachelor's degree from the University of Chicago and graduated in 1949. After graduation, she worked as a private duty nurse, civilian nurse for the U.S. Army, surgical nursing supervisor, and in different nursing administration positions. She then went back to get her master's degree from Wayne State University and graduated in 1962. After obtaining her master's degree, she taught at many different nursing institutions. She received an honorary doctorate from Loyola University in 1992. Levine stated that being in nursing school was a great adventure, and I agree with her on that. Aside from her husband and children, education was Levine's primary interest. She received the Estr Elizabeth Russell Belford Award as the Distinguished Educator. Why Myra Esther Levine developed the conservation model? Well, she said she never intended to develop a nursing theory. She wanted to find a way to teach the major concepts in medical surgical nursing to undergraduate nursing students. And she wanted to move away from nursing education practices that were more procedurally oriented and instead focus more on active patient solving and individualized patient care. Some influences on Levine's conservation model. Levine used an inductive method to develop the conservation model, which is a way to describe something that leads to something else. So when applied to reasoning, it just means you collect information and draw conclusions from what you observe. She borrowed information from other disciplines while retaining the basic structure of nursing, she cited personal experiences as evidence of her work's validity, and she indicated she was influenced in the development of her philosophy of nursing and the conservation model by many individuals, including familiar names such as Florence Nightingale and Hans Selye. The conservation model. Overview of the conservation model, which states the goal of nursing as the conservation of a patient's energy to allow for healing and promotion of wholeness. A disruption to either internal or external environment is a threat to a patient's health, and disruption requires nursing interventions related to conservation to restore wholeness. The environment. The environment completes the wholeness of the patient, who is seen as a holistic being who strives to preserve wholeness and integrity. The internal environment combines the physiological and pathophysiological aspects of the individual and is constantly challenged by the external environment. The external environment includes factors that impinge on challenge the individual. There's perceptual, which is aspects of the world the individuals are able to interpret through their senses. There's operational, which is physically affecting individuals but are not directly perceived by, by them. So examples are radiation or pollution. And then there's conceptual, which includes cultural patterns characterized by our spiritual existence and factors that affect behavior and like values and beliefs. And wholeness is a state in which the internal and external environment have the best fit. On this slide, I'm going to discuss three main concepts in this conservation model which include adaptation, which is the process by which the patient maintains integrity within the realities of the environment. Adaptation, according to Levine's theory, is every patient has a unique range of adaptive responses, which vary based on the individual circumstances of the patient, such as age, gender, and illness. Conservation seeks to achieve a balance of energy supply and demand that is, it, that is within the unique biological capabilities of the individual. Essential in the knowledge of conservation is the fact of wholeness, integrity, and unity, all the structures that are being conserved. Wholeness is the state in which the internal environment and external environment have the best fit or exist in a smooth interface. And Levine 
based wholeness off of Erickson's description of a wholeness as an open system. Adaptation has three characteristics. The specific adaptive responses that make conservation possible occur on molecular, physiological, emotional, psychological, and social levels. Historicity refers to as adaptive responses are partially based on personal and genetic past history. history. For example, as nurses, it is important to account both personal and genetic factors when planning care. Specificity, each system that makes up a human being has unique stimulus response pathways. Responses are stimulated by specific stressors and are task oriented. For example, a hot stove, which will elicit a pain response, an inflammatory response at the site of injury, and an emotional response. And that emotional response will help the person to remember that what it feels like to touch a hot stove as to make that, not to make that same mistake again. Redundancy is the notion that if one system or pathway is unable to ensure adaptation, then another pathway may be able to take over and complete the job. So can be help that redundancy can be helpful when it's corrected. When it's, um, for example, like allergy shots over a period of time to desensitize the immune system. But it can also be detrimental. Um, an example of that is an autoimmune disease where a patient's own immune system attacks previously healthy tissues in a body. Levine believes nursing intervention is a conservation activity with conservation of energy as the primary concern. Four conservation principles are listed on the slide. Conservation of energy of the individual, conservation of the structural integrity of the individual, and conservation of personal integrity of the individual, conservation of social integrity of the individual. Conservation of energy is the human body functions by utilizing energy. The human body needs energy producing input like food, oxygen, and fluid to allow energy utilization output. So it's important as nurses to encourage rest so the patient has the energy needed for healing. Conservation of structural integrity. The human body has physical boundaries like skin and mucous membranes that must be maintained to facilitate health and prevent harmful agents from entering the body. So it's important as nurses to promote healing with as little further damage or scarring to the patient. Conservation of personal integrity. Nursing interventions are based on the conservation of the individual patient's personality. Every patient has a sense of identity, self-worth, and self-esteem, which must be preserved and enhanced by nurses. And for social integrity, the social integrity of the patient reflects the family and the community in which that patient functions. Healthcare institutions may sometimes separate the individual from their family, so it is important for nurses to consider the individual and that patient in the context of their family. An example could be preservation of old and creation of new connections if needed between the patient and social entities outside of self. This slide highlights four levels of organismic responses. The outcome of, of nursing involves assessments of organismic responses according to Levine's model. An organismic response is a change in behavior or change in the level of functioning during an attempt to adapt to the environment. Organismic responses are intended to maintain a patient's integrity. The nurse is responsible for responding to a request for health care and for recognizing altered health and the patient's organismic responses to altered health. So different levels of those responses can include response to fear, the flight or flight response, inflammatory response, response to stress, or perceptional response. Use of the nursing process according to Levine. So we first have an assessment where we collect through observation and interview of challenges to the internal and external environment. Then there's a new term, trophicognosis, which is an alternate term used to give a medical diagnosis to better reflect the nursing focus on the art and science of nursing. There's the hypothesis, hypotheses which direct the nursing interventions with the goal of to maintain wholeness and promote adaptation. The interventions which test the hypotheses based on the conservation principles and evaluation which is observation of organ, organismic responses to intervention. Nine models of guided assessment in Levine's theory 
include what are listed on the slide, such as vital signs, body movement and positioning, administration of medicines, establishing a, a aseptic environment, local application of heat and cold. So these are just different um, guided assessments that she uses in her theory. I like this, this drawing um, of her, Levine's conservation model. It helped me kind of get an understanding of how this model works together as an organizing framework for nursing practice. The goal of the conservation model is to promote adaptation and maintain wholeness using the principles of conservation. So you can see that in the center. Um, written in a, in a little triangular shape-ish um, with words in them, state optimal health is the goal of adaptation, importance of nurse support in the process of adap adaption, health and disease are patterns of adaptive change, responsibility of nursing during vulnerable times of dependency, and successful adaptation adaption best supports conservation with least energy expended. This conceptual diagram also helps me visualize how I could use this in, my, in nursing. According to Levine's conservation model, a patient's state of health depends on the nurse supported process of adaptation. So effective adaptation leads to conservation where a patient achieves his or, home, his or her own unique optimal state of health with minimal energy expenditure. The overall goal of nursing is to recognize, assist, promote, and support adaptive processes that benefit a patient. So you can see from this slide how you have the internal and external environment, which can disrupt the wholeness of the patient. And by nursing, by helping with those adaptation things, um, by helping the patient with adaptation, we can conserve the wholeness of that patient. Assumptions of the conservation model. The nurse creates an environment in which healing can occur. A human being is more than the sum of his or her parts, responds in a predictable manner, is unique in their responses, knows and appraises objects, conditions, and situations, senses, reflects, reasons, and understands, has self-determined actions even when emotional, is capable of prolonging reflection through strategies such as asking questions. So I'm going to record part two on the next screenomastic that's going to talk, discuss the application to practice in the preterm infant and also an application in the second stage of labor and then evaluation and it will end with um, questions to help answer in the discussion boards.